Well, I am going to do an intro to Rails. I'm going to be using Rails 3, uh, the recently released release candidate. Um, however, I will not, uh, with some exceptions, probably be pointing out all of the differences between 2.3 and 3. Uh, for just for your information, mostly going to focus on this being a, an intro to Rails. But you'll see a few things, and uh, if I remember, I'll try to highlight a thing here and there. Uh, but basically, we're just going to get started. It's going to be a live code demonstration, uh, sort of, because I'm probably going to do some copying and pasting from because I've already built this project twice to make sure I knew what I was doing. But I st I'll still screw up. So you're welcome to point that out as well. If you have any questions, yell at me, because I'll get going as I am right now and ramble and not pay attention to what anybody else is doing. All right. So, to get started with Rails, first thing you want to do is generate a project. And uh, although you won't see the difference here, Rails has a new and improved a way to generate just about anything. But generating a project is easy, so just kind of think of a name. And I'm going to call this Bump the News. So basically all you do is call the executable Rails and then the name of your project. Um, in this case, Bump the News. Oops, I lied. You have to say new, bump the news. See, I already screwed up. And that will create a bunch of stuff. And we can look at all the stuff that it creates, but really we just want to go into the directory that it created and look at all this stuff. So for those who are new, uh, the meaty part of the app is in, believe it or not, app. Uh, there's some various config files in config. In fact, typically you, depending on what type of database you wanted to use, you might want to open up uh, database.yaml. In this case, we're just going to use the default SQLite, uh, which is really, really easy and means that I don't have to talk to you much about database stuff, which is awesome. Uh, when you do generate a new app, hopefully this will be in here somewhere. Oh. Oops. Oh, I've already screwed up. Sorry. So I just generated a Rails 2.3 app. Because I am using RVM. And I didn't switch to my Rails 3 stuff. Alright, we'll try this again. to show you. I guess I'm not going to show you. Anyway, you can, uh, there are a bunch of options that you can send to the Rails uh, command, including dash D, and then you can specify a database adapter, and it'll set that stuff up for you. So that's good to know. Anyway, let's get on with this. So what we're going to do today is uh, create a sort of a Reddit, Hacker News, Dig-ish site, only the very, very basics. Uh, so that this doesn't take us several days, basically. Um, basically, we're going to have posts and comments. Uh, but one of the first things I want to do, uh, because I'm, I went from a uh, JavaScript framework called Prototype, went from a lover of it to kind of a hater of it, uh, I want to replace Prototype with jQuery. So in Rails 3, you can't jQuery is actually kind of a first-class citizen, whereas in, in previous versions of Rails, prototype was built in and a lot of the Rails pieces worked directly with prototype. And it was, uh, you had to have a plugin or a gem or something to, to get the same functionality with jQuery. Uh, thankfully, in uh, Rails 3, it's not that difficult. So the first thing we're going to do is make sure I'm doing these things in the right order. Oops. Going to remove all of the prototype stuff. So as you can see, all of that except for application and rails.js is from prototype. So we're going to go ahead and do that stuff. All right. So now that we've done that, we need to replace that Rails.js that you saw in there, 
is that is a prototype specific file with the, excuse me, Mountain Dew, uh, jQuery version, which you can grab uh, from that URL I just typed into the thing. I'm not going to bother connecting. Uh, anyway, I'm just going to copy it. All right, so there we go. I'm not actually going to do a lot of JavaScript, but I thought everyone would want to know uh, how to switch to uh, jQuery. We do need to grab jQuery as well, however. What operating system are you running? I am on OS X, Mac OS X. Copy jQuery. <coughs> And I'll want to make sure that uh, in Rails you have a layout file, typically, and then uh, stuff gets essentially inserted amidst the layout from the rest of your you know, view files. If you're familiar with MVC, and I won't get into it too much, but model view controller, uh, um, paradigm? We'll go for paradigm. Paradigm in a sentence. Huh? Use paradigm in a sentence. <laughs> I just did. <laughs> uh, <coughs> yeah, so you have a bunch of, of views. This is essentially just a view, but it's kind of like a view wrapper, if you will. So we're going to open it up and look at it, maybe. And this is the default one that's generated with Rails 3. So that's a lot of fun. We want to make sure we have the correct files that we just put in there and install, or uh, being being called and, and placed into the application when we run it. So we need Rails, and this will add the .js for you. So you just the basic file name minus the extension. Uh, I grabbed the minified version because um, it's habitual. <coughs> All right. There. Now. I'm not going to demonstrate it, but I promise you jQuery would work if I wanted to do something with jQuery right now. So that was a lot of fun. Now let's get down to actual business. What we want to do is generate something. In this case, we want to generate posts. Uh, we need you know, a model, a post model, which is essentially uh, an interface for the data that's going to be in our, our posts table. Um, we need a controller. So I mentioned the MVC earlier, we need views. Uh, and thankfully, um, if you just want to get started really, really fast, and you're willing to plug your ears when people tell you that this is not a best practice, uh, and ignore them, Rails has what is called scaffolding. And this is not like the really early Rails scaffolding where you just inserted a line of code, and Rails generated a bunch of code for you, and you never saw what that code was but it made an app for you and you were happy. Uh, that was removed because uh, it, a lot of people felt like it was too magical uh, for what it's worth. So now they have a generator that actually generates a bunch of code for you. We want to generate, as I said, a post <laughs> resource. Yeah. What? Color. It changes color. Oh. It's a feature of OS 10. It's not. I need to. Remember what fields I need here. Okay. Right, so we can specify the database fields that we want and their, uh, their data type, which is another awesome thing about the Rails gener generator. In this case, we know we want a title because we're going to have a bunch of posts. You know, if it's like Reddit, uh, for instance, uh, it's basically just a title and then a URL. And that's pretty much all we need. 
However, if we're going to be doing uh, up and down votes, then we want ups. And we want downs. And just to make a certain retrieval of data in the database easier as far as ordering uh, or even excluding things based on just their raw rating or their, their ups minus their downs, we're going to go ahead and cache rating in the database, which just a, 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 a good practice. But really what we want is that that value that ranks the posts. Uh, so Reddit has a specific algorithm that we're pretty much going to steal because I've used it elsewhere. So I already have it written in Ruby. So I'm cheating. It's awesome. Uh, but ultimately what we have is a, a decimal value that represents each post's uh, ranking um, compared to all other posts, essentially. So, and it's actually a, it's a burned down with relation to when the post was created, and we'll get into that later. And we won't really, because I'll just show you what it looks like, and then we'll move on. And it'll be fun. <laughs> all right, so we generate all this stuff, and it creates a bunch of stuff. What we really want to look at first is to see what specifying all that stuff did for us. So all we had to do is, is specify some of this stuff on the, on the command line, as you saw, and it uh, generates this code. And what this is called is a migration. Uh, Rails uses these, this code, essentially, to, to represent a database table. And you can run this, and it will actually create the table and create the, the columns specified here with the data types specified here. Uh, does that make sense? Yeah? All right. I assume nobody's yelling at me. We're good. So, as you can see here, uh, all we have to do is, is run this migration and we create this table timestamps is actually creating um, two different, we could also do it this way, two different uh, fields for you, created at and updated at. But there's a shortcut, t.timestamps, and we're just going to leave it at that. So, one thing um, that we want to do if we're going to have this all of this rating stuff going on is we're going to want defaults for some of these integer and, and fields and the, the ranking field as well. So we're going to set ups to one because sort of the way Hacker News does it at least, if, if you uh, are posting something, you're kind of voting on it also. So we'll just give ups a default of one. And in that case, if downs is a default of zero, rating is going to be one, whether we like it or not, so we might as well set its default as well. Just to be safe, because it makes algorithms easier later, we're going to set the ranking default to zero. So as you can see, you can set the default pretty easily using the migration, and then uh, we'll run this migration um, here in a second, and it will you know, essentially just generate some SQL, run that SQL against the database, set defaults for these fields. So let's do that right now. Rake is uh, Ruby make, if you will. Um, basically, it's, a, it's an easy way to, to write uh, some command line tasks using Ruby, and you can call them using rake. So we're going to gloss over that real quick and just run rake db migrate. All right, so we've created a table. So that's cool, we did this scaffolding thing and you guys haven't really seen any code. Uh, you saw a little bit of the migration, we added some defaults and that's the most we've done so far. Let's see what that gets us. So if you want to start a little development server so that you can just uh, use your browser to, to see what you've got so far, just call Rails server. And this is actually a difference uh, from in 3 versus Rails 2 point whatever or, or, or even before that. Um, Rails used to insert a directory called script that contained uh, various executable scripts such as server, and you would call script slash server in order to start a server. Uh, they got rid of that. So all of that stuff is in this Rails executable, and this Rails executable knows how to do that now. So that's kind of cool. So as you can see, it started up a server, and it's just going to output uh, basically a log straight to the screen there, straight to standard out. 
We're going to ignore that. So this is what you get. This is actually just index.html. It's stuck in the public directory uh, inside your Side. Sorry. If you look in public, that's essentially the, the web root, if you will, of your application. So in there is index.html. And that, you get that for free when you generate uh, a new Rails app. Excuse me. However, what we want to look at is these posts we just generated. So you automatically get uh, an e-wireless hotspot <laughs> when you generate a new Rails application. That's new in Rails 3. <laughs> That's actually why the release candidate took so long. Uh, they're still trying to figure out, evidently. So this is what you get for free from uh, the scaffolding. And in fact, we can create a new post. However, it's kind of stupid that these ups and downs are in here. Because really, those are things that we're going to use internally. We don't need to expose those on a form. So before we create a post real quick here, let's version of thing that I don't even want to kill myself. Is there such a thing? Just yes. Oh, just check it. <laughs> Editor smack talk. <clears throat> Did I say it was opening? All right. So in in app, there's a views directory, as you can see. Oh, as you can't really see. <laughs> Can you see now? <laughs> and in that, when we scaffolded earlier, was created this post directory, and we're looking for this form view. What the underscore means is that it's partial, uh, which basically means it's it, you can include it in your other non-partial views. Uh, yeah, we can talk more about that later, maybe. So this is the now very odd to read for me, view of the form partial. <clears throat> so as you can see, these are uh, this is how we're creating these these text fields, and, and this again, this is the code automatically generated by that scaffold. So we still haven't written any code. We have a we have a form. Uh, it doesn't look super awful, uh, and it generated uh, fields depending on the data type, um, which you can't really see in this, but we'll see later when we generate comments. We want to get rid of ups. Uh, we don't really need downs. Uh, don't need to be able to manually set the rating or the ranking, nor do we want anyone to. There we go. Now let's see what we've got here. All right, so we deleted some stuff and made a nice, a much nicer uh, form here. Let's see if this works. Can you see that all right? No, make it bigger. That's what she said. <laughs> Heard this radio ad today? Anyway. Uh, Alright, so that was easy. We can already create posts. Uh, didn't have to do a whole lot. Now, let's see what we're going to do next. Did that. Oh yeah, so remember how we saw this stupid index thing earlier? Let's just get rid of that, because it's really not very useful. It's cute, it's just not useful. 
So now what happens? Uh, crap. So now we don't have anything there and doesn't know what to do when it goes to the roof of our website. In Rails, there's a nice uh, file in your config directory called routes.rb. I am not opening this up here. All right. And forget all this other stuff. So that was a bunch of comments that tell you nice stuff. So if you really want to read about routes, you can always just generate a new Rails app and read the uh, config slash routes.rb. However, all we want is to create this root uh, route here. And it's been made a lot easier in Rails 3. Uh, or at least sort of easier and a little bit more fun to write. Um, in Rails 2.3, you wrote map.root, and then you specified the action and the controller, blah, blah, blah. In this, this is a shorthand. So this is saying our posts controller and this is essentially just a separator between the controller and the action and our index action. So, just to give you an idea of what the posts controller looks like. This is what the posts controller looks like, like right now, and this is the index action. Uh, it's just grabbing all the posts, and it's got a couple, of, we could you know, either render them as XML or use our view that is index.html.erb. That's in the app views directory. <clears throat> so all we're saying is this is what this is the action that we want to happen when someone goes to the root for our website. Save that. There we go. We have a list of posts. Tons of fun. So we still haven't haven't had to do a whole lot. And uh, we have stuff that works. So that's awesome. And I Look at that posts controller because it's it's cool that it generated all this stuff for us, but this is kind of I mean I think this is kind of confusing for a new person, and it's just kind of annoying I guess more than anything for uh, even the veterans. Thankfully, uh, Rails three has done a lot to make this make a lot more sense. I don't even know what the hell this is right here. See, it's complicated. So we can do that, or we can do something that's about half the lines, and granted I removed uh, comments as well, so it's a little bit more than half. But this is the, the essentially the way to do it, and you can ignore this, that comes later. This is the way to do it in, in Rails 3. So instead of Remember when I said I wasn't going to show the differences between Rails 2 and Rails 3? <laughs> that was a total lie. <laughs> total lie. Uh, you can still do this, obviously, because Scaffold generated it in Rails 3, and it works just fine, just as it did in Rails 2. In Rails 3, they're now, instead of as it, having all of these format.html, format.xml, all of these lines spe specifying in the respond to block uh, what each action responds to, you can just put that up. As a, it's now a class method, you can put that at the top, and it'll take care of it. And then you have these respond with, which essentially just sends that object along. Uh, so if it, it, if it were looking for XML, it didn't find a template, it would take this uh, object and the, this argument to the respond with instance method and uh, turn it into XML automatically. So that's kind of cool if you're into XML, which I don't know why it would be really done. So we're just going to copy all of this. And I'm going to do that so I can come back to it later. And, oops. Oops. And not do that. What have I done? Yep. And the reason for this involves, instead of doing the respond with here, involves uh, comment stuff later. So don't worry about it. If you wanted to, you just have to respond with uh,
There we go. And now we went from 83 lines to 37 lines. So that's, that's pretty awesome. And one thing I want to point out, um, in Rails, they have this, a lot of helpers surrounding stuffing stuff into the session, uh, such as a message, you know, like, hey, thanks for, uh, thanks for creating that post just now. And then it gets destroyed basically immediately. Uh, it's called Flash, for whatever reason, which can be confusing. Uh, and before, for instance, we'll see here, let's say we put it right here. You used to do something like this in every action, and sometimes twice in every action if there was an error. And then, you know, cool. So you, you added something to the flash notice, that session variable, and it's going to display it on a page and get rid of it for you, which seems still awesome. Everybody's like, yeah, this is awesome. This is easy, right? Well, now you can just, in your when you're redirecting, you can just add a uh, uh, notice uh, key and value pair here, and uh, it takes care of it for you. So. Now you don't have this whole extra line with the flash notice stuff, and you're just saying, yeah, by the way, when you redirect, add this notice, thanks for voting. That's awesome. So that's a lot easier also. Um, continue, I guess, to point out everything that's different in Rails 3. So I'm a liar. All right, so we've, we've uh, cleaned up our post. That was fun. So now speaking of uh, thank you for voting, that's something we're missing right now. We can't, you know, there's no way, oops. Oh, right, I copied stuff. There's no way at the moment to, uh, to vote on any of, any of these posts. I can see, you know, it's, it's got the default one-ups. Uh, but no, no, no way to vote on it. So let's add some voting buttons. Let's also remember how I added those voting buttons. So what I'm inclined to do is uh, really we want those voting buttons on, on that index there and with, with every post. In fact, let's add another post just so we can get the, the whole effect of what this is going to look like here. Yeah, vote that up. <laughs> I can't wait to pump it down. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to steal from a view that I made earlier. This right here. So right now, it generated this table, which, uh, whatever, we want to put in a new column in here with our, our buttons. So we're editing the <coughs> index view right now, and right here, we're just going to add all, oops. I'm going to fumble around for a while. to show, you know, the rating. Uh, basically what we're doing here is we're creating a form for each button, each voting button. Uh, we've got a form for upvoting or bumping up, as I'm calling it in this app, the thing, which basically just has a hidden field that adds one to the current number of ups for this post and has a button. And then the same thing for the downs, except it uh, adds one to the downs, obviously, instead of the ups. Um, I'm going to point out another difference, Rails 2 and, uh, and 3. In Rails 2, 
every string was just automatically considered HTML safe. Um, meaning, essentially meaning, by default, you were open up to uh, um, cross-site scripting attacks and the like. So someone could say, enter some JavaScript in a field, and unless you had purposefully esca escaped it when you went to display that field that they, they created, uh, your, the JavaScript would get executed. Well, so it became a best practice to add, um, or to use a certain method, in this case H, to escape everything. Well, now in Rails 3, everything is uh, safe by default, essentially. So you have to call something on the string in order to allow the HTML to be displayed. Um, in this case, and this can be kind of confusing, basically what you're doing here is you're marking this string as HTML safe. This is safe, display exactly what I've got here. Uh, don't worry about escaping it or you know removing anything. This is what I actually want. So that's, that's why that dot HTML safe is there. If I just wanted to, uh, let's see. If I just wanted to say that, I wouldn't have to call this at all. Uh, but that's not as fun as Unicode arrows. So. For future reference, the word up is not as cool as Unicode arrows. All right. So let's see what we've done here. All right, cool. We have we have buttons with the aforementioned awesome Unicode arrows. Uh, so let's see what they do. Now, what we told them to do in this form is we said this is a form for this current post, and basically Rails sees that and goes, ah, existing post, it's not a new record, and uh, so he wants to update it, and by default, this is basically going to create a form tag that posts to the, uh, well, posts, yeah, more or less, technically, or non-technically, depending on how you look at it, a put to the... Uh, post controller, and the update action. So again, something you get essentially you know, really cheap, uh, with just a, the crooked vultures are awesome also, with just a, uh, just a couple lines there. So let's see what happens. Bump this up. And look it. You. Very well done. You know what? <laughs> All right, so anyway, yeah, that's, that's kind of cool, but we're, we're missing some stuff uh, that like sets the rating. Like right, this is, the, this, we're displaying the rating right here. Well, the rating is still set to its default. We also don't have any code in there that uh, uh, calculates the ranking um, or anything like that. So let's do some of that. So that is all going to happen in our model. That's kind of where uh, the real work happens. <coughs> Open up the post model, and there's nothing in there at the moment. So let's think about some stuff that we want to happen as far as the post data goes. Uh, I think the obvious one if we're working on a web app is you uh, want to make sure that you're actually getting data submitted uh, you want to validate your data. Just trying to think of another way to say it. Let's just be honest. That's what you want. You want to validate your data. So that's kind of also really easy to do. Right? So we know we have a title field. We want to validate that title. How do we want to validate it? I don't really care how long it is or anything like that. And and you can do stuff like that. You can say length and some stuff. Uh, in this case, I just want to validate that it's there. So I just want to validate that the, the title's actually there. So that's easy enough. And I also want to validate that the URL is there. All right, cool. So now I'll show you. That didn't work, because I don't have a title. Nobody knows who Tommy is, except for me and a couple other people. 
this room right now. Max power, right? <laughs> well, let's see what happens if uh, we don't have a URL. All right, URL can't be blank. So that was that was that was really easy. That's another thing we got, you know, really cheaply. Go ahead and fix that, and it worked just fine. All right, so cool. Well, what I said was the pro what I said the problem was was with uh, uh, the lack of ranking and rating and stuff like that. So let's uh, copy and paste. And I'll, I'll go through some of this real quick. All right. Anytime, this is a, this is before save is a callback. Um, and what that means is anytime we're saving a record, right before we save it, call this method. We'll get down to that method here in a second. And then this is saying before an update. So basically that's the same as a before, before save, except it's not going to happen on a new post. Um, Quick note for non-newbies, uh, the callbacks have changed in Rails 3, so you should look at them. Look at uh, the Edge version of the Rails guides, and there's a, there's a different order. Um, some of them don't exist anymore, like after validation on update, for instance. Uh, so just take a look at those if you're working on a Rails 3 app and you know make sure you know what's up. Um, I'm actually pretty sure they're not called name scopes anymore, although name scope does still work. Name scope is, is more or less a class method that uh, gathers all of the posts with uh, the conditions at the end here. So in this case, I just want to gather all of my posts and order them by rank. Uh, uh, huh? I think it's just scope now. Yeah, I, I think, think you're right. not till three one. It a name scope will work till three one. Yeah, cool. Uh, all by rating, and then this one down here. And actually, I should have remembered that this is different because there's a new syntax. That's kind of cool, but uh, we've talked enough about the differences, I guess. This is recent, so in this case, I'm just doing in the any any posts within the past ninety six hours. Um, and these are just more or less examples I'm not actually going to use, at least I'm not going to use recent anytime soon. Uh, so we also have this hot class method, which I accidentally oh. called earlier. Uh, and that's just how I lied, I am using the recent method. <coughs> that's just grabbing, uh, as you can see, you can just chain these, these name scopes. It's grabbing uh, recent posts and then ordering them by rank, and then I'm just uh, slicing off the first 10. And that's essentially what's going to be on our uh, posts index. So as we looked at these earlier. Uh, hot. Awesome. So now we're just getting the, the hot posts on the uh, index page. So that's awesome. Uh, rating, uh, basically just subtracting downs from ups. Um, and then I think somewhere in here, calculate rating just set, sets the actual database um, field to the the result of the rating method here. So earlier when when I was saying uh, before save, calculate rating. That's all I was doing, just making sure that got the correct rating got into the database. Um, so this rating polarity thing, I'm not going to get into it too much. Uh, but it's 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 part of this calculate rank uh, method, which is more or less the Reddit method for cal calculating popularity, or at, it is as of when they open sourced a few years ago. I don't know if they have a separate closed source version where they're tweaking it, but that's very possible. Um, so one thing you can do, as it mentions in this comment, and all of this code will be uh, up on GitHub shortly after I finish here, and I've been going forever. Um, you can, you can, somewhere there's a, right here, this constant you can uh, mess with to uh, change how, basically change uh, the way the rate, the ranking works if you really want to get granular with it. And, uh, try to keep posts, you know, in the hot category for longer and stuff like that. So, 
is all about. Or which is which. Anyway. All right, so now, let's see what this looks like. Oh. There's a reason for it. I, I, just, I have it. Yes. We'll go with that. This is a magical date today. Anyway. Yep, do that. All right. So now it has calculated some rankings and stuff. And we can see it's actually updating our rating. This is what we're going for. Killed here. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> I cannot win. All right. Uh, so, one cool thing about Rails that I wasn't going to get into is this thing called a console. And basically, it opens up uh, IRB, which is uh, a, a REPL, uh, read eval, print loop, uh, so you can get feedback on your Ruby code really quick. And it also loads your uh, Rails app. So that's really awesome. And that means we can look at all of our posts real quick, figure out which one is mine. <laughs> and right from here, update attributes such that I have a lot of upvotes. <laughs> <laughs> so there we go. <laughs> All right, so I feel better about myself. <laughs> now, where was I? Right, so we have posts working pretty much as, as we'd want them to work, right? I mean, none of this is pretty. I mean, this is, this is really pretty ugly, and it's still displaying all this ranking and rating stuff. But whatever, that's fine. It's kind of cool to see at the moment. Uh, just for good measure. <laughs> um, we can create new posts, we saw that already. Uh, we can view an individual post, which I'm just going to go like this. And one is the ID of my post, so that's how you get to it. Yep, cool. All right, so what are we missing besides uh, something that doesn't look horrible? What we're missing is comments. We need comments or else it's not Reddit. I mean, I mean, we need people to be able to, to, you know, tell me I'm stupid, which happens on Reddit quite frequently, or You're just stupid. add a comment that says FTW or WTF, depending on their mood <laughs> at the moment. Uh, so let's generate a comment model. We'll start with that. So earlier, you know, we did a scaffold. We did generate scaffold and all this stuff, and we got. Uh, that got us a style sheet, it got us a bunch of views, it got us a ton of stuff. Right now, let's just do the model. This is a demonstration. And a shortcut, many of these uh, um, arguments, essentially, to the Rails executive will have shortcuts. In this case, to generate, you just do Rails G. It's kind of like OG, but not as awesome. Uh, we just want to generate a model, and we want to call it comment. Uh, so what's a comment have? If I remember correctly. All right, so it has a, uh, a body of the comment. Uh, that's going to be a text field, because it could be kind of large. People really like to like write large comments on Reddit, uh, explaining all of the ways in which someone else is wrong on the internet. 
we also want a commenter, and you know, we normally probably would have authentication and stuff, but we're going to do anonymous comments because we're really smart. Uh, and we want this to be in reference to a post. So there's a shortcut for getting that done. And you can't see it right now, it sucks. There we go. You do post and reference, colon references. Uh, and I'm just going to generate that so I can show you what that did. So you can, as you can see, it created another migration, uh, which we're going to look at right now and created some test stuff and a model, which is the thing we requested in the first place. Let's look at that migration. Maybe. All right, so we got our body, it's text field, our commenter is a string, and t.references post. So it's going to figure out that we already have a post model. And ultimately what it's actually going to do is add a field, <coughs> an integer field called post ID. And that is going to reference, you know, like in, in, in the case of the entry that is my blog, that would be one. But this takes care of it for us. And it took care of something else for us as well. But let me migrate real quick. It also added this belongs to line, which is a, basically uh, setting up the relationship in our code. Uh, you know, a comment does belong to a post. And uh, in the same vein, we need a post to have many comments. So makes a lot of sense. One to many relationship. That's what's going on here. Pretty straightforward, I think. All right, so one thing that we did here that we haven't done in comment yet is add validations. So in this case, we're going to say there has to be a commenter, there has to be a body. All right, cool, that was easy. What else did we do earlier? Well, we should probably have a controller if we're going to be creating comments. So we can generate that separately. So let's just do that right now. Comments controller. Typically, you want your controllers, and this, you know, there are lots of cases where you don't want to do this, but uh, it's common practice. Your controllers are essentially plural versions of your model, for what it's worth. All right, so now we've got this comments controller. Now, do we have any way to get to that? No. We need a route. Uh, in this case, because comments are are essentially children of, po of a post, um, they're always going to be nested. At least I want them to always be nested. I don't plan on doing much with comments outside of the uh, idea of the existence of a post. So what we can do is, even in our routes, we can uh, specify that the comments are nested under posts. And what this gets us is something that looks like one being the ID of that post and then comments, and that would be the index action. Uh, or if you were posting to it, it'd be the create action. If you were putting, it'd be the update action, etc. So, and then if, if we wanted to just look at a single comment, it would be something like that. So that's what this nesting gets us. And it's really easy, uh, you know, pretty straightforward. Not too much to worry about here, I don't think. Um, yeah, so we have comments kind of now. Uh, we don't have any place to put them or enter them. So let's do that. Where would we want to enter them? I Personally, uh, I think you enter them on the uh, post show page, which currently looks like this, right? So let's, uh, let's grab some code from elsewhere. links that we're eventually going to get rid of anyway. All right. So what this is saying, and the reason this is the same uh, form four that we saw earlier, uh, this array is saying essentially we have a nested relationship here. So it needs to, the, the, the uh, 
form needs to know that there's a post in existence that is the parent of this comment. That's basically what that's saying. Then we have a text field for the commenter and a text area for the body. And we have a submit button. Pretty straightforward. And then down here, we're just listing uh, comments, essentially, and who the commenter was. Let's see what that looks like. All right, it looks like an error. Oh yeah, because uh, you may remember earlier when I kept removing stuff from the controller so that you guys didn't have to bother with it. There's this stuff right here. We need, in our controller for the, the show action of posts, we need to set up a few things. So you noticed I had uh, confusion. Uh, I have this comments instance variable, which I don't have set up anywhere. And I have this comment instance variable, which I don't have set up anywhere. So we need to set that up in the show action of our controller. Uh, comment singular that we use in the form for is just a, uh, a new empty comment, essentially. So that's how you do that. That's the post that exists, its collection of comments, uh, which there aren't any at the moment, but basically that, that collection and a new one of those. And that's what comment is. That helps us with the form four. And then comments is just all the posts comments. All right, so now let's see what's going on here. All right, cool. So what happens? Let's, let's uh... <laughs> see what happens. Oh, yeah, see, we created a comments controller, but we never did anything with it. So let's go look at that. And let's also look at one that I created earlier, so that I don't have to think. It's clear that that's not going well. All right, so I mentioned earlier that we have those, you know, the nested resources, and we, we, we had to do something with that in the form for uh, method. And then here in the create, it also needs to know about that, that post that, we're, that is nested. So, we had post slash one slash comments, right? That one is going to get turned into this parameter here in this params hash, post ID. Uh, Rails is automatically going to take that one, push it into this uh, variable essentially, and then we can find the post from that. So that's awesome. And then we need to create a comment. Uh, so we take that post that we just found, the comments collection, and we create a new one. Uh, and all the params that were posted from our form are going to be, all the parameters from that, that form are going to be in this params hash under the, uh, the comment uh, hash, actually. And then we just want to direct back to the post when you add a comment. So let's, uh, let's see what that looks like, let's see if that works. Let's make sure we still got all this, yes, I know. All right. uh, did it work? It did, awesome. So that was pretty easy. Uh, what do we have left to do? No, really, what do we have left to do? Uh, so, we're just going to do a couple cleanup things real quick, just because I want this to look kind of nice. How do you base the red style sheet? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, something like that. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> So I'm really curious, is this automated? Am I? Okay. You left your edit form. Well, I'm sad. Well, anyway, uh, I'm a little bit devastated at the moment, so I'm having trouble remembering what, what I need to do. So when you uh, bump, it, it adds a number, but there's no other feedback. And we talked about that flash notice thing earlier. And if you'll remember, oh my god, I have too many open files. Uh, you know, I put that notice in there, so, oh, wait a minute, where is it? Yeah, it's, it's, it's not showing up. Let me show you how we can get that in there. I need to open up that layout file I talked about earlier. Well, I should do this because it's nice to see it. Just an app views layouts <laughs> application. So, let's add... All we have to do is use this helper that Rails provides called Notice. 
Now let's see what happens. All right, thanks for voting. That's what, that's what I wanted. All right, uh, now I feel good about myself. <coughs> So that's, that's the basics of it. We're going to, however, copy a few things, a few other things over. And if there's anything significant in there, in any of these. That you want to know about. Just let me know. I will tell you all about it. For instance, I moved the JavaScript include tag to the bottom because it's just good form. Because uh, you really don't want, if you can, if you can avoid it, you don't want to uh, load all of your JavaScript at the top of the file because they block, uh, and it means the file's not going to draw or uh, the it's not going to draw essentially until it's uh, loaded all the JavaScript, which can be annoying. So, so this way, it, as far as the user is concerned, it looks like uh, things got loaded really quickly. Uh, what else am I missing? Let's just replace these views here. This would be something nice. I'm not using tables all over the place. Oops. I swear, just give me a moment. It's going to look nice. I hope. Uh oh, style sheets. <clears throat> It looked nicer when uh, I only had single digits here and I was just doing this on the Because then all of this lines up and stuff. Uh, but that's, that's the general idea. Oh my god. Okay, <laughs> remove error messages for and I have no idea what that says. You can scroll all the way. Basically, the error messages for a helper is removed, and so you kind of got to do everything manually. Oh, really? Which is yeah, to a you, yeah, you get your hands a little more dirty, but you can see what's there's less magic involved. Nice. Okay, did I have that in here somewhere? So I definitely didn't put it in there. So something generated there for its work. <laughs> um, all right, yeah, so that's it. Uh, it kind of looks nicer. Uh, we can still, you know, do all the stuff that we did earlier. Uh, any questions? Things I glossed over quickly or not quickly as it works. It's taking like an hour. Uh, is anybody fall asleep this time? Can you click those links? Can I click links? These? Oh, okay. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I'm not currently on the internet. So. This takes us to the comments, which is kind of nice. I'm, I'm still awesome. I'm just going to leave this on the screen. <laughs> there we go. All right. You might run uh, rake routes one time just so people can see me. Oh, yeah. If you want to see. Uh, no, that's not very awesome. No, it changed it. Um. <laughs> so if if uh, you can't read this, but if you're, I'm sorry, one one second. If your terminal were uh, in such a way that it didn't wrap, you could see basically what routes you've written into your your config slash routes.rb file by running rake routes. So this gives you an idea. Uh, is that semi readable? Okay. Um, 
Yep, so there's that. Yeah. How, how were they able to change your source code? They were able to get into your source code and put some stuff right? I, I don't actually know. No. We, we, we uh, the, the web server that he had running. So okay. we were just actually using his app. Okay. Somebody else was having some fun with uh, yeah. posting stuff, I think. Inspector. I was going to say, nice. configure your application as those routes can get really long and very, um, you can make it easier to look at stuff by like piping it to grab. So oh, yeah. Show sure that off. Is that like right. a gong that you just got? Huh? Is that like the gong you just came and disconnected? The it was, it's, it's like the uh, wrap it up. <laughs> if you're familiar with Dave Chappelle at all. <laughs> Totally show you something that uh, Max Power just told me to show you. But our projector seems to be a refresh or something. Unplug and plug back in sometimes in the future. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, any other questions? Where can we get more information about Rails? I'll look for you. Uh, Railscast. Railscast. Railscast.com. I was trying to remember if it's, is it guides.rubyonrails.com, I believe? Yeah, or there's Edge Guides, too. Edge Guides was useful for me while I was doing this. Um, really, I just Google a lot, although it's now becoming difficult to Google for like stuff specific to Rails 3 in this transition mode where sometimes you end up with people who just write Rails 2, 3, and you end up with stuff that's not quite right. But anyway, Edge Guides is a great place. Railscast is a good place. Actually, omgblogllol.com, which is Jeremy McNally's blog, oh my god, blog lol, uh, is, is, he's got some, some very good information there. He also has a book on upgrading, I believe, in 2.3 to 3 somewhere. Is it? You've checked it out? Yeah, I've got it, too. I, I started reading through it. The only thing I noticed is it's almost like he took just his blog and, like, there's certain parts where he clearly didn't edit it and it's he's still talking like, oh, I'm going to do another post about this. <laughs> yeah, it's nice. How, how much is that? It's, it's like 12 book. bucks. Okay. Is it a peep, peep code book? No, he's got, well, I mean, the way I got it, at least, was on his own site. I don't know if it might be now. Is it now? It is. Okay. Okay. Well, anyway, I'm sorry. That took a lot longer than I had expected it to. So, so we want to jump in here? Thank you for putting up with that. Yeah.